السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين وباعث الأنبياء والمرسلين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أمين الله على وحيه وعزائم أمره الخاتم لما سبق والفاتح لما استقبل والمهيمن على ذلك كله ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام على صاحب السكينة السلام على المدفون في المدينة السلام على المنصور المؤيد السلام على أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين والخلص من أصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا عرضنا الأمانة على السماوات والأرض والجبال We have offered this trust this weighty and important trust and amana على السماوات والأرض والجبال فأبين أن يحملنها وحملها الإنسان They declined to undertake this responsibility فأبين أن يحملنها The only one who accepted our offer was insan human being human being because they have a role in this life and we have been given the choice to accept this role or to decline it. What is our role in this life? Another verse explains our role in this life. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا Verily, we have sent, we have dispatched رُسُولَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنْزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانَ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْطِ We have dispatched our emissaries, our prophets, our messengers with the clear signs and we sent down with them the scriptures and the balance, the scale, the scale, they have a scale with them, spiritual scale to uphold the balance, to uphold justice. Our main mission in this life is to uphold justice and this is why we love this man, Al Imam Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu was salam. We love him because he is a man of justice. Because he succeeded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And justice is embedded in his blood, in his soul, in his genetic structure. Ali ibn Abi Talib is a man of justice. And today, today, the whole world is suffering from injustice. The whole world is suffering from oppression. Every corner, every country, every society. While we are celebrating the life, of, the life and legacy of Ali ibn Abi Talib, we are also commemorating 50 innocent souls that were taken two days ago, with no reason, with no justification, other than inflicting damage on the humanity, not just on the Muslim community. God says when someone is killed with no reason, مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ أَوْ فَسَادٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا if one soul is being murdered with no reason, with no justification, then this is a crime against the whole of humanity. This is a crime against the whole people of earth. The entire earth today is suffering and crying and weeping for over 50 souls who convened in a holy place on a holy day a holy hour to be connected with their Lord. And then all of a sudden someone comes with his gun, modified gun, to inflict the maximum damage. 
and mercilessly open fire on those people, on worshippers. This is a crime against the humanity. We really appreciate and thank some of our neighbors here. This flowers that you see in front of you, this one from Beth Jacob Synagogue. Our neighbors, they brought this flower this morning, one from a synagogue and that one from a church, Fairview, Fairview Community Church in Costa Mesa. They came to show solidarity, to show their love, their sympathy with us, to be with us, to stand with us, because whatever touches us touches them too. Whatever touches them touches us too. We are followers of faith. We integrate each other. We stand with each other. Yes, yes, probably our schools are different, but our Lord is not different. Our Lord is the same Lord. And our, our Lord calls upon us to live up for justice. Today, people are suffering. And Imam Ali alayhi salam says, nothing can build a country or a society like justice. Ma ummiratil biladu bimithlil adl. No country can build itself and progress and develop itself without justice. Ma ummiratil biladu bimithlil adl. In another hadith, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu was salam says, in al arda, truly, the earth, it becomes attractive and beautiful. When the ruler, the president, the prime minister, the sultan of that country, of that society, is a just ruler, he turns into, he turns his country into an oasis of love. He turns his country into a paradise of peace and stability and justice. It reflects on people. It reflects on their psyche. When we have a tyrant ruling any country, whether in the east or west, you see the akhlaq of the people changes. Their manners change. They have a tyrant in the presidential palace sitting there, but then you come to the families, to the individuals in the streets, in their homes, and you see them different. You see a father being harsh with his children, a husband being harsh with his wife. Why? Because the leader of that country, who is a role model, definitely a role model, because they watch him 24-7 on television, they listen to his speech, they see his pictures everywhere. He's a tyrant. He speaks tyranny. He acts like a tyrant. So it reflects on his subjects. It reflects on the morality, the psyche of his subject. Do you know why some countries, some countries, who could be Islamic countries, Islamic societies, but the people are not behaving well? The reason? Because of the leadership, the top leadership. Imam Ali says when the Imam, the leader of that country is careless about justice and fairness and equality, then this disease is contagious, is going to spread all over his country, all over his society. The entire nation pays the price. Whereas if there is someone who believes in justice, someone who's just, himself he's just, and believes in justice, he's going to turn. My friends, we have, sometimes people learn, they go to school, to New Horizon, okay? To Harvard, to UC Irvine. Sometimes they don't have to go to schools. This society is a school. We learn from the streets. We learn from the marketplace. We learn from the neighbors. We learn from the people around us. We pick up and we learn. Imam Ali says, justice begins with yourself. No one can spread justice. No one can teach others justice if he's not just. 
You have to be just to yourself. Be just to yourself. The journey begins with myself. If I'm not just to myself, if I abuse myself, if I'm a dictator with myself, if I wrong myself, قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا Adam and Eve, when they petitioned for forgiveness to God, the first thing they said, they said, we admit that we wronged ourselves. We did injustice to ourselves. We did not appreciate ourselves. This is why we went into the wrong direction. We have to be just to ourselves first. If I am not, don't have justice with myself, I can't give it to my wife. I cannot give it to my children. I cannot give it to my congregation. Justice with yourself. And then justice with your Lord. The Lord who is so generous with you. Who is so compassionate. You know how many times, how old are you? Ask yourself. Each and every person asks himself, how old are you? 50, 60, 40, 30? How many times so far since my birth, God have protected me against dangers, against perils? How many times? Many times. You know, many times God protects you. He's so compassionate. He's so merciful. When you are alone, sometimes you don't have food to eat. Sometimes you don't have a friend with you. Sometimes you don't have a place to stay. Sometimes you don't know your way. You are confused. But God came. He rushed to your aid. He's merciful. Shouldn't we be just to him? Shouldn't we listen to him? Shouldn't we respect him? Shouldn't we say at least once a day, thanks God. Thanks God for your, what you did to me. We have to be just with God. And then when we are just to ourselves and just to our Lord, we will be able to be just with others. Islam says the prayers that we do and the fasting and the zakat and all these things that we do, including the salat that we are going to do in a few minutes, these are not goals. These are means. Means. The goal is something else. The fasting that you're going to practice soon in the month of Ramadan for one whole month, it's not, it's not the end. It's only means. The charity that you give, the zakat that you give, the khums that you give, these are means. Then what is the goal? What is the goal? Why do we pray five times a day? For what reason? Why do we fast the whole month of Ramadan? Why many of us, they do fast during Rajab and Sha'ban too? God says, لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْتِ The ultimate goal is that people live, live up to responsibility, live up to justice and peace in their societies. So people do not commit wrong. This is why we pray. So if we are praying and then after the prayers we commit wrong, we commit injustice, then we are losing everything. In fact, we are not praying. In fact, the prayers are not coming, coming to fruition. This prayers is fruitless. The fasting is fruitless. God says all these ibadat, all of them, even when you go to Hajj and Umrah, even when you go to Ziyarah, even when you read this book, the Holy Quran, you read it for one reason, for one ultimate goal, to be a better human being. To exercise justice. To implement justice. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, Adlu sa'a. Adlu sa'a. If you can uphold justice for one hour, خَيْرٌ مِنْ عِبَادَةِ سَبْعِينَ سَنَةِ Better than worshipping, dead worshipping, physical worshipping, that lasts for 70 years. Some people worship, but their worshipping is only physical, not spiritual. It's a physical exercise. فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ God threatens those who pray. Why does he threaten those who pray? They are praying. He says because their prayers is dead. It's only a physical exercise. Does not teach them lessons. 
They only pray physically. They don't connect with me. Have you seen sometimes when you use your iPhone online and you have, what is the opposite of it? Offline, offline, online and offline. Sometimes the prayers is online, connected to God, and sometimes it's offline, disconnected. It has no spirit, it has no meaning. فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاؤُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ They forget about the goals of their prayers, the results of their prayers, the advantages of, of their prayers. عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاؤُونَ They show off. They only show off. They are not genuine. They spend their entire life showing off. They are not genuine. يُرَاؤُونَ وَيَمْنَعُونَ الْمَعُونَ And they don't help people around them. Selfish. Some people, they do pray, but they are selfish. Some people fast in Ramadan, but they are selfish. God says this is not ibadah. Ibadah should help you to reach closer to me, to get closer to me, to be closer to your humanity. Many times I said, Imam Ali السلام, ruled for only four years and nine months, no more. Four years and nine months. But he did not have an office. Imam Ali's office was in the streets of Kufa. He didn't have a chair, he didn't have a table, he didn't have a house. He didn't have an office. People would meet him in the street. Have you seen a president that always, always 24-7 meets his subjects in the streets? Imam Ali was taken from Medina to Kufa. When he arrived in Kufa, there was a magnificent palace. The remains of that palace still exist in Kufa today. If you happen to go to Kufa one day, go to this palace, Qasr al-Imara. Qasr, the palace of Imara, leadership or governance. He refused to stay in that palace. He said, I am here not to live in a palace. I am here to serve. I am here to be with my people. I am here to protect my people. I can't afford sitting in the palace. I have to be with people. Some people, they said to him, but you have to sit somewhere. People come and meet you. He said, no, sometimes people are disabled. They cannot walk. I have to reach out to them. I remember old days when I was growing in Iraq. Doctors used to come to see us at home. In America, I haven't seen this. Have you seen a doctor goes to, to people's homes? Maybe if he's his friend or family members. But I always, I grew up, the doctor will come to my house to see me. I would not go to his office. Imam Ali used to go to people's homes because he's a real doctor. He's a real leader. Imam Ali says a leader has to be a servant. Today in Muslim countries, I said this many times, we pray, we fast, we read the Quran according to Sister Najwa. We have the Quran on the shelf. Whenever we have death in the family, we read the Quran, but justice is missing, my friends. Justice is missing. Most countries who have political prisoners today in the whole world are Muslim countries. Do you know? Muslim countries have the highest number of political prisoners. In some countries, they have hundreds of thousands of journalists, journalists behind bars. Why? Because he does not report what the president likes. So if you don't match the desire of the president, if you want to be free, if you want to report freely, you end up in jail. Justice is missing. We have to go back to our roots. We have to teach our children justice is important. We live for justice. We are here, as Sister Najwa mentioned, we are God's vicegerents on earth. Khalifatullah. And God is just. And he wants us to be just with all people. Imam Ali says, the most person with justice, the most equitable and fair person in the society is the one who incorporates justice with his enemies, 
let alone friends. Even with our enemies, we have to have justice. When this white supremacist opened fire on Muslims and he murdered over 50 people of them, 50 innocent souls, we don't do the same. Some people said we have to revenge. We have to retaliate. We don't do that. We don't do that. We do not return evil with another evil. This book tells me return evil with goodness. Because you are a teacher here. You are a mentor in this life. God sent you here as a mentor, as a source of inspiration. You cannot return evil with another evil. And that is the example of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the example of Ali ibn Abi Talib. I'd like to thank all of you who participated tonight, my friends. We are getting very close to the time of the prayers. In fact, now it's the time of Maghrib prayers. We will do the jama'ah together, inshallah. And we will have the dinner later on. And I'd like to thank our friends who, who organize this celebration, today's celebration, and also the celebration on February 23rd. We had the celebration of the Milad of Sayyidat Nisa al Alameen, the daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Fatima al Zahra Alayhi Wasallam, on February 23rd. And that was organized by only women. No men interfered, Alhamdulillah, in that celebration. It was only organized and conducted and performed by women from A to Z. And this is something right we are doing here. We have to empower our women in America. We have to tell the American people, we have to tell our neighbors that there is no differentiation, no discrimination between men and women in Islam. And we have to show that. We have to exhibit that to the people. So those who performed that celebration and organized it, I thank them. Sister Najat Khan, may Allah bless you and her daughter Zainab Zaki Hussein, Sister Fatima Ra'ad, Sister Atiyah Taqiyi, I'm very proud of Atiyah, Sister Arizu Yasai, Sister Nahid Mirafati, Sayyida Nahid Mirafati Yasai, and Sister Tanweer Daya, who's in Orlando, she had to leave with her children because her mother-in-law in a critical condition in the hospital. So please pray for the mother-in-law of Sister Tanweer Daya. And every person who participated in that program and organized that program. My friends, only two minutes, no more, inshallah. We have a donation for this celebration and for the Islamic Center. We have a check for uh, $1,600, $1,600, $1,600. We have a check for $1,100, $1,100, and we have a check for $200. Those of you who'd like to donate for the Islamic Center so we can continue our programs, please do so, write your checks, be generous, because this is an institution that we all need. Our children, they need this institution. Our grandchildren, our women, our old, our young, we all need these to keep these institutions independent, independent from any influence. So you are the suppliers, you are the donors, you are the one who keeps the door, who keep the door of this masjid, this Islamic center open. So please write your checks, give them to Brother Haj Samir Amiri, Brother Haj Ja'far Yasai, Brother Mujtaba, uh, after or before the Salat, inshallah. And join me in your prayers, in your dua. Let's pray for those victims who lost their, wi uh, their lives on Friday. Let's uh, pray for the wounded ones. Many of them are in very critical condition, who also uh, were wounded in these two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand. And let's uh, pray for their families. It is very hard to see your loved ones die right before your eyes. And I heard about many heroic stories a father who stood in front of the bullets to protect his only son. 
his only son. They have only one son, and it was his birthday. So the father stood before the son. He took the bullets. The father died in order for the son to survive. Noble father, noble human being. This is sacrifice. He reminds me of Imam Ali. Imam Ali said to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, you go for the hijrah, you leave Mecca. This is in the Holy Quran in, in Surah Al-Baqarah. I will sleep in your bed. If they want to kill me, attack me, let them do this to me. I'll protect you, Ya Rasulullah. You have a good, you have a great mission. You have to continue your job. This is sacrifice. These things we have to teach our children. And also we thank Dr. Mehmet Osgur, who is among us tonight. He just moved, recently moved from Glendale to Laguna Beach. So we welcome him. We welcome his son, Dr. Omar Osgur. May Allah bless him. And we welcome and thank their honorable mother, Sister Najwa Osgur, for her beautiful introduction. She has lots of experience raising children leading a school one of the most successful schools in the nation so may allah bless this family and inshallah it won't be your last trip it is the first but it should not be the last and we want umar and burak umar when you come next time you bring burak with you inshallah inshallah allahumma khfir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat tabi' allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat innaka mujibu al da'awat innaka ghafiru al khati'at innaka mahi al sayyi'at wa ja'iluha hasanat innaka ala kulli shay'in qadir please join me in reciting surah al fatiha for the soul of the martyrs of christ church new zealand al fatiha ma'as salati ala muhammad wa ali muhammad